How's it going, everybody? What time is here? How are you, everybody? And welcome to the August 16th, August 17th uh, Chaos Metrics Model Meeting. The minutes are in the chat. I'll put them there again. You could add yourself, that would be wonderful. Uh, so thanks, I will share my screen and it's great to have everybody here. It's great to be here, Matt. Wonderful, <laughs> and we're on the same page. Yeah. Emma, hello. Emma. You're, you're muted, just so you know. Hello. Hello. We figured you were saying hi. Yeah, yeah. I, I saw the words. I saw the wave. <laughs> Sometimes hi. people don't realize they're muted. So I said something, not to shame you, but to inform you. All right. Happens several times a day, right? So it's <laughs> it certainly does. Pretty hard to shame anymore. <laughs> um, Sean, you did go off video. I don't know if that was by design. Mm -mm. It was not. Okay. Something else must have taken over my camera. Lord knows <laughs> <Totally>. what. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. So why don't we go ahead and get started? Somebody had put review spreadsheet for metrics slash update in the in the box. So I just went ahead and took that <laughs> and started running with it. Um, so there were a few things that I think I wanted to talk about today. So we can take a look at um, the metrics model spreadsheet. So here we are. Um, we have obviously a couple metrics models that are ready for review and a couple that are in progress. I was kind of looking at um, the focus areas that we have here. And we did have this area right here, the Project Health 101. And we had, so we have one metric that's in progress in there at the moment. And a little bit later, I'm gonna even suggest that we change the name of this metric based on the availability of the metric model based on the availability of metrics that we have. So part of this first request that I'm asking is that we that we just kind of take a look at what our focus areas are here as to how we arrange our metrics. And I think sometimes simplicity is our friend in this situation. Um, so I don't know if people have had a chance to kind of think about this or look at focus areas. I think I think response responsibilities should be moved to the community engagement. It's uh, yeah, it's more responsible from from community, more people will come to engage with uh, with other people in the community. Okay. The funny thing is, is I was going to suggest that we move it to development, but I'll show you why. <laughs> okay. In, in a, in All a, the differences of opinion. Let's argue about it. Can we have no, a, no, a throw no. down? Okay. <laughs> well, I think that we, I think that ultimately we need a development responsiveness and a community responsiveness metric. And I'll, I'll kind of talk about that or a awesome. metric model. Um, in a second. So, okay. Um, we have these other ones. So for example, we have DEI project badging, but we have DEI event badging up in community engagement. So to me, this would be a likely candidate to move up to, to community engagement. So I just, I don't know what people's thoughts are on trying to kind of rethink our, our focus areas. And I had suggested maybe just these three to start us off, development, community engagement, and sustainability. This seems to be where most of our conversations have occurred over the course of the last many weeks, that we talk a lot about development metrics models, like code development or software development metrics models, community engagement metrics models, and then metrics models around sustainability. For example, in influence, remember we had that nice conversation from Frank and Shoya around influence. So my, my suggestion was to, to bring them together a little bit. Just We can expand later, but to just... So this is where comments, <laughs> other comments can come in too. <laughs> 
Or if you like it where it's at, that's fine too. We can just keep it here. But sometimes I look at this document and it's, there's kind of a lot of pieces moving along. Uh, I have one question actually, uh, because uh, most of the considering uh, metrics model is come for, uh, is coming from the metrics, uh, original metrics. How to define it with uh, with uh, you know combined with uh, some other metrics? You know, currently we treat it as a metrics model, but um, but there's no other metrics to support this metrics model. So I think this is your comment. No. Is Oh, go ahead, Sean. Yeah, that would be where we would want to add metrics models, I think. Yeah, but all the metrics model uh, com are composed of the metrics. Some some metrics model, it's kind uh, I mean, transferred from metrics, it's kind of like um, uh, an, uh, uh, independent with others. How to how to handle it. So is the concern like sometimes we have a metric and the metric was a fairly complex metric and we transfer it to the metrics model working group. Mm -hmm. Is that right so far? And yeah. As part of that transfer, we don't necessarily know how to define it as a metrics model. Is that the concern? Yeah, because because I don't know how, how to how to define this metrics model with uh, with other, you know, composed of the metrics. We but anyway, we, 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 we can move forward, I think. Okay. Well, okay, so the, I think your point, hold on to that point, because I think it'll come up with when I talk about responsiveness as this one that we were talking about. So, okay, so action item, I guess, for everybody is take a look at these focus areas and, and kind of think if, if you think these are the right ones and if what your thoughts are on potentially consolidating them to, mm -hmm. to just a few, that's all. They're just, they're, the focus areas are really just a way for us to organize our work. That's it. Like They're not really seen by other people. I didn't mean to make this like a big deal, <laughs> but like it's just a way for us to kind of organize our work. And I think sometimes when we have too many focus areas, the organization looks broad and, and fanned out. So, okay, enough of that. Um, I, I, I know that as part of this, irrespective of where they are within a focus area, the hope is, is that we can continue to make progress on our, the metrics models um, so that we can ultimately release them. And so I've been spending a little bit of time and one of the metrics models, I looked at a couple, one of them was responsiveness. And so this was, this was actually, I kind of worked it from, this was actually from some work that you had done, Emma, around responsiveness um, with respect to pull requests, issues, um, and also responsiveness in discussion boards. So I've been trying to capture a lot of, or like forums. And so we kind of had a couple different metrics that we were looking at with respect to um, responsiveness. The challenge that, so I, I took a look at what you had done, Emma, and I, I was putting it into our new template that we're using for the metrics models. And one of the challenges that I had was we didn't necessarily have, and I think this is your point, Yehui, we didn't necessarily have a metric for responsiveness within a discussion board or on a forum. We just didn't have that metric. It didn't exist. So as much as we wanted it in the metric model, it didn't exist. You know what I mean? So, so like mm -hmm. in an effort, for this responsiveness to move forward, what I did was I took a look at, at some of the things you had proposed, Emma, and then also what we had from a released metrics perspective, because the metrics models are meant to, to take the released chaos metrics, the ones that we have published and, and put them into practice. And so I was taking a look at what we had with respect to responsiveness 
just around software development at this point. Mm -hmm. And these were the ones that that I had seen that we have. I like that, Matt. So like, for example, issue response time is a kind of a message response in a sense, but I suppose it's not a response to a first message after the first response. If that makes sense. But no. <laughs> well, so with issue response time is basically the, so I create an issue, the response time is whenever somebody on the project in a maintainer role makes a comment or addresses it, right? Yep. So that's a comment. And I think when you're talking about comment responsiveness at the top, you're talking about, okay, when somebody does that, how long does it take for a subsequent comment to occur? So is this is this is the definition from like this mm. is a straight up definition from the issue is or from the metric itself. Yeah. So, so this, typically yep. a response from other contributors is a comment. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yep, exactly. Yep. On the same page. Yep. And so this would then be whatever development responsiveness. Um and this is a metric model. This is a metric model that is working off of the stuff that Emma had provided to just think about responsiveness. And so we have these metrics available to us. And then that was my point, Yuhui, like that would move this one mm -hmm. into this one. See what I'm saying? Sure. Then at this point, I, I agree with you. Let's move it to the development. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I mean, when I present it that way. Mm. But but then one of the things that it did was it it lost some of what what was in the original metrics model, which was the response time to say forums or discussion boards that was taken out because we didn't have that metric. You know what I mean? And so I do think there's like something to be said for, I'm gonna move this out of my way. Um, that bar. Would it fit in to welcoming this? If we do end up making that metric? Yeah, I mean, we just, we don't have, we would have to create a metric that is like forum response or, you know what I mean? Like Slack response or something like that. And I, yeah, and I would say welcomingness is already chocked full of metrics. Like it might be, it might have That's too true. many. It might have too many metrics based on our subsequent discussions about what a nice number of metrics in a metric model is. So we created that model, but then afterwards, after that, we decided that maybe fewer metrics within a model would make it more make these models more digestible, as it were. So Matt, okay. I, yeah, go ahead. Uh, going back to your original question about the Project Health 101, you know, the more I look at that spreadsheet and think about it, uh, like you could argue that any of the metrics models would be Project Health 101. So it's kind of too broad, I think. So maybe we could just get rid of it and plop these somewhere else. Okay. On this one, could if this does at least temporarily become, say, development, I don't know. I, that seems like a terrible name, but something along those lines, then this could move. Okay. Oops. I did it. Okay. <laughs> um, so that would that would at least again I'm just trying to capture the things that we had. And we had so many moving parts early when we were doing these metrics models, like with the different templates, with the different approaches we were kind of trying to take. You know what I mean? So I'm trying to 
just kind of bring this together with with the the kind of the way we we've been working now. No. Okay. No. Um could somebody maybe take a look at this? Um like I said, I retain a lot of the top is, is still the stuff from from Emma cuz I think a lot of the text still worked. Um even for development responsiveness, we don't have this would then require this stuff, right? You know what I mean? I don't have any of this. So this metric model wouldn't have to have a deployment of some sort where we give an example of what this could look like, you know? But at this point, we would actually have metrics to pull from. So those that bottom part, am I right that those are kind of going to be narrative interpretations of the data that's produced by the quote unquote model itself? Yeah. So as an example, like if if I come to the other one that I was taking a look at, project engagement. Mm -hmm. This was the open Euler project, if you recall. And so there was a proposal of like a, a way to measure project engagement, which is a metric model in the sustainability focus area. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there's an example here about how, do you remember this? Yeah. How, how project engagement could be measured through a variety of different weightings. And then ultimately, so it was kind of like a case study almost mm -hmm. on the open Euler. Um, community. I think that's what a lot of these bottom parts are really just becoming. They're almost like case studies, you know, mm -hmm. data insights or case studies, taking a look at a, a community and just trying to see what this model could tell us in a community. Um, so at that point, though, I'd need like to, to kind of round out this metric model. We need this done. Um... <laughs> is that part just is so my my question and maybe it's a question for Emma and maybe it's a question for the group I'm not sure are those sections are they really directly derived from data or are they something that a person would add after looking at the data presented in the parts above it I mean I guess the visualizations would yeah clearly, yeah clearly be something but the other two feel like uh like sort of a contextualized interpretation, but maybe I'm. No, I think you're right. So, I mean, like this would be like, <clears throat> we took a look at open source project, you know, ABC, and mm -hmm. this project does this, this, and this. That would be kind of that section that I have highlighted right there. Yep. Um, and then this is like, as a collective, as we look at these four things together, what does this t tell us about the community? How do we, look at these as a metric model together you know as we see these four things in in concert with one another well, i think i think these four things are you know if i was to pick four metrics that told me a story about how engaged a, met, a repo or a community is with its contributors these you know this response these responsiveness indicators are pretty strong signals about how interested and in welcoming a community is with regards to outside contributions. Great. So that would be so those would be the insights that you just yeah, from the model. Yeah. That's just it. And so then we also have this insights drawn from specific metrics in the model. So in the open Euler case, or there was a different case. I maybe it was the the influence case, there was also conversations about what each metric might be telling us individually about this community, not just collectively, but what what one might be telling us as well mm -hmm. in isolation. Yeah. That, and so it would be, it's, it's an interpretation that we provide on the data just to kind of help people see, I think, locate themselves as to how this metric model could be meaningful for them. I sometimes give the example of like responsiveness. The goal isn't to necessarily be able to close everything in like five seconds, especially if you're like looking at the intersection of like burnout, right? Like if your maintainers like 
if their metric around burnout is really high and your responsiveness is, you know, maybe there's some things we could deprioritize around response. Like there's, it, it opens up really interesting conversations anyways. There was actually a comment when you were talking, Emma, I think it's defect resolution time. If you click on that one, the metric itself has this disclaimer that's like, keep in mind if the resolution time for defects is really fast, that could be just because the maintainers are just like, <laughs> just closing everything. They're like, don't care, don't care, don't care, you know? And it's not- Yeah, really... huge security risk too, right? Yeah. <laughs> not, not, uh, not is really that important? Is, secu is security important these days? I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> so points well taken. So those would be the insights that we could draw from this kind of stuff though. So I think it is just a bit of a narrative, an interpretive narrative uh, interpretation. So. Okay, um, great. Thank you for that. Um, Hello, hi. Oh, hi. Excuse okay. me. Uh, yeah, yeah. I have a question. I was looking at the responsiveness. Uh, my question is, uh, will a new metric called the responsiveness be calculated from the four metrics listed here? That is correct. That's the proposal. Okay, okay. In the... So uh, I haven't seen the model. How, how to aggregate the four metrics into one? Sean, I would defer that to you. Uh, well, I mean, there's two, there's two approaches. One would be to just look at each of the metrics discreetly and recognize that there may be different individuals or parts of the group that are addressing each of them. The other way to do it would be to weight them and provide a, a singular metric. Okay. And, and I don't have a I don't have a religion about either approach. I think I think you would tend toward the weighting if you were looking at a large number of projects and trying to identify differences between them, because it would be easier to look at a weighted number for one weighted number for all those projects compared to four That's true. numbers. Um, but if you're looking at a smaller collection, you, you'll probably get more clear insights from the, the discrete metrics as part of the model. And, and so I think it's, I think you could operate the metric either way, depending on the scale you're trying to deal with. Okay, okay. Thank you. Th that's my opinion. It's don't take it as gospel. <laughs> uh, thank you for the question, Liang. And yeah. For the answer. Good. Um, and speaking of waiting, not not waiting like waiting, but waiting. W e i g h t i n g. <laughs> that uh, we have the the project engagement metric as well. So I took a look at this one. Um, this one, this is one that had um, there was quite a bit of work done, and I'm I'm it's certainly not done. So. Um, Hey, move, 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 move. So basically this metric, um, I've been trying to work down, there was a narrative, I think June had provided a lot of the initial work on this metric, if I'm, if I remember correctly. So thank you, June, for that. Um, so I took a lot of what June had written. Um, oh, June, you're on. I'm, I'm really glad that you're on. Thank you. Um, and so I took a lot of what um, what you had done and tried to get it, tried to fit it into the template that we have. So I might need you to take a look at um, what I had done with the language that you had typed to get it to fit. Um, one of the challenges that I have, and so this is the, the weighting component. So as part of the engagement metric, um, June provides a variety of different metrics right here. And so these are like D0, D1, and D2 are different types of community participants. I, I think org count is, for example, their organizational affiliation. And so there are a variety of different metrics that June provides um, for uh, engagement. The ch challenge that that I was running into is we don't always have 
this is the metric mapping problem. We don't always have kind of a one-to-one -one mapping of what you had talked about, June, in the model and what we have as a released metric. You know what I mean? So there were, mm. there were parameters that you provide here, which I don't have any problem with, but like D0, I think this is like a maintainer. D1 is like a sort of maintainer and D2 is the less maintainer. You know what I mean? It's like it's gradations of, of people who contribute to the project. We don't really have that type of, well, you can click it. Yeah, you can follow this article here. Um, we don't really have that type of specificity in a metric. Yes. So I'm, I don't know what people's thoughts are on maybe, this. Maybe, maybe June could add, uh, add the definition of this D zero one two into this metrics model to let people more clear about, about because what it's they, about what they are. Yeah, about the yeah. about these terms. Yeah, yeah, that would be helpful. And so, what do people think about? Um, <clears throat> So like in this case, so in this case, like issue response time is just something that it's a metric that we have released and it's something that we can measure. You know what I mean? Like Sean can measure that with Augur. Yeah. Yeah. Anything that's trace data obtainable yep. can be presented. This is a, a little different. So we have like we have a metric for committers and a metric for contributors, but they're they're kind of wider ranging metrics that capture these. You know what I mean? They they map a little bit, but not perfectly. Does this make sense? So what I, I, what um two different uh, definition we could uh, have the contributor con contributor and con commit and we why we um, and we also have um, director zero director one okay I think I think this part could be moved to the uh, implementation part of the metrics model to say how to implement the whole okay yep. model. Like and in the definition part, we only leave the explanation of the each of single metrics. Like and this. also, yeah, and also the the mechanism how to calculate the whole metrics could move into the uh, implementation part of this metrics model. Okay, so we just have some language that says, from a metrics perspective, we have committers and contributors, but when we do the implementation, there's a, a nuance or a, a, very, a fine yeah. way of looking at it. And here's how we recommend that you actually look at, at yeah. contributors, okay. Okay, like that. What do you think, Jun? Um, okay, we could try. I don't think it'll change the work that you're doing, June. I think what Yahui suggests will it'll keep everything completely fine. We just just up here we present it as the metrics that are in the model. You know, the metrics that we find in the model. And I was trying to look at the metrics that you have down below the parameters. Um, but then in the implementation, we describe in detail what you're doing, um, but in detail what we mean in this particular case about committers and what we mean in this particular case about contributors. Is that right, Yuhui? Yes. Okay, good. Okay. So would you expect to have like a, like a single score? Uh, sorry, I to step away because I, someone's 3D print didn't work. Um, okay. Uh, like a score, like how would you say like, 
are we are active or or is it just that you want people to go through each one or what does it look like for like a is that what you're talking about weighting things or yeah so there is a single score and so hmm. at this at this point and the weighting can be specified as far as i understand the weighting as proposed hmm. can be specified by a, a a community manager so there, there are things that are considered of higher value temporarily you know what i mean mm -hmm. or for a particular context oh that's super interesting i mean and i, I think it there really is always a trade-off when when you create the single score with weightings you're removing information but you're creating something that can be interpreted across a large number of things more quickly mm -hmm. if you're looking deeply into five repositories i would suggest not weighting them and just looking at the raw stuff to get a real sense of what's happening but if you're looking at a, a hundred repositories that's you know you probably don't have the two days it would require to look at all that stuff you want something more summary level I, and then think, would you oh sorry yeah, i'm just trying to understand how someone would so if i'm like a maintainer of a project and like i'm thinking of this from an Oslo perspective you give me this score and i can see how things are weighted it's also behavioral, like we want to drive that, but it could change with that. Would you all say like, this is just, which makes sense. Like, I, I think priorities change and we tell. <clears throat> so I'm just sort of wondering like, yeah, like it, it would, uh, um, would it be motivating for people to try and change their number? If they, it's, this is more of like a psychological question. <laughs> is it motivating to tell them a number if, if things could change or, like, how do you see that playing out as far as like the actions people would take out of curiosity? <clears throat> so I think a person, in my opinion, is a person who's really focused on a small number of repositories as part of a project, probably wants the detail. A person with a broader responsibility can't likely process the detail. So when you remove that information, you probably annoy the person who's focused on these three repos because you're boiling them down to a number. It, it, it takes them back to school and all the PTSD associated with it. <laughs> Maybe it's not even for the specific people who care about the single metrics uh, of this metrics model. It's, it's about a, a group, like a, a specific interesting group existing in the in a community. If we have more than 20 uh, SIG group, I mean the specific, specific interesting group, we have to calculate the whole uh, activities or engagement of, uh, of these operations uh, for the, uh, of the six in this community. We have to say how it's running, how they are running in this community. So we give them a, a general score of the single, of, the, of each single, uh, six and uh, and uh, because all the metrics model they have some direction to tell people how to run it well on some directions so if your score compared with other uh, six score is low uh, you need to find out how to handle how to how, how to handle it then the metrics exactly in this metrics model would tell you why your score is low uh, what what kind of thing you can you can run it and, you know, with with some help with other people. Very, very clever. Yeah. All right. So thanks for the conversation and good question, Emma. Um, I did have a question for you, June. The parameters that you have listed here, how important is it that these are the parameters that make up the engagement metric model? So for example, meeting attendee count is not a metric that we have. And it's not one that I don't think we can easily get. Hmm. I think uh, we we have someone could uh, represent it uh, in the general in the general uh, working group. Okay. 
Uh, I cannot find it so far, but uh, uh, let me check. Is this a, is this formula contingent? Uh, on okay, I, I found it. <laughs> we can uh, because the some something like uh, meeting attendees, and uh, we 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 found something in the activity dates and the times in the common working group. I can share it here. So oh, actually, okay. I I, I okay. prefer some more specific metric to support this. Okay. Uh, you know, as an atomic, um, atomic metric to support this like uh, these, like meeting the account. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But uh, but before that, we only have we we only found this uh, activity dates and times. Okay. I share it on the on the slide. Yeah, on okay. the chat. Sorry. So in that case, if you, I mean, if we want to keep these, which I'm hearing that you, you want to keep these, we will have to build these metrics because we don't have them. Exactly, I agree. Okay, okay. The metric is already merged in metric, 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 um, GitHub repo. Uh, yeah. I think we still, even if it is, I think we can still do some work against it. I think we still need to update it a little bit. So sorry, you, going. Oh, yeah, go a quick question about that meeting attendee count. Is that something that would the common group would work on then? I, yeah. Uh, meeting attendee count. Yeah, I don't know. Probably. Not sure. Maybe yeah. Because I, I feel like I I can work on that. Like I I that interests me because I keep track of how many people are coming to the chaos general community meeting, and so because I like to see and I I actually use that metric, but it's yeah. all manual. So I was just kind of digging into Zoom a little bit, and I think we can pull some of that data. So yes, I I'll I'll add that to the common agenda as a okay. proposed metric. Sorry. Thank okay, you. continue. No, no, thank you. And then. No, thank you. June, maybe you and I can talk over Slack just to okay. go, go through these parameters to make sure that we either have a released chaos metric for it or we oh. identify the metrics that need to be developed for for this. You know what I mean? We just those need to be in line with one another for our release metrics models. Yeah, okay, we, we will check it. One okay. by one, in a sec. And I've started, just so you know, June, I've started here. I've actually started it. I've tried to look at the parameters that you have and take a look at the metrics that we have. So I've, I'm, I'm, but I, so I think we just need a little bit more work to get those two things aligned, that's all. Okay. All right, cool, thank you. <clears throat> all right, so in that, I moved, I moved these from needs work to in progress because I think they're 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 coming along now. Just in terms of aligning with the template and kind of getting getting them to where we need to be. All right. Uh, thank you. Um, ooh, all right. So Emma, did you put yourself on the agenda? I did. <laughs> You're up. Well, some someone else put update question mark. So I just tried to elaborate. <laughs> <laughs> Not very intellectually. Um, well, I thought I'd just come and share because you were also like great at um, joining us in some chaos inside of Microsoft calls last year, just to show you where we are right now. So not to be like, here you go, here's like this package. And um, but I thought it might be interesting because it, one of our goals is to contribute back to chaos some of our work. So um, yeah, so I thought I'd share. I'll just be quiet and share my screen. At least be quiet about the preamble. Yeah. It's really not very useful. Oh, um, pre yeah, preambles are very useful. I mean, we can. Okay, see this works. You Do you see be... GitHub? No, we see you. Oh, okay, just hold on then. Oh, I see. Sorry, I don't use Zoom very much these days. You're using Microsoft projects, aren't you? No, I use Teams, teams and I'll be honest, yeah, like Teams. teams, teams. <laughs> yeah, I really, I mean, I work. You tend to like the tools you work with every day, but I really like in Teams that you can share 
when you when you have present mode like so your notes are right there so that kind mm -hmm. of like sells me out. anyways yeah um, we see it now but we're all going okay. to teams eventually anyway so you're just ahead <laughs> of the curve resistance is too tall it, it really no, is um yeah. no <laughs> it really is it's, it's uh, our Stop. legal teams use our legal teams using it so i'm positive it's coming to our university soon oh yeah <laughs> yeah um yeah so um just a remark i mean first i'm not sure who's on the call still but um so last year um i sort of kicked off what i called chaos inside of microsoft um, because people were coming this is sort of like the where where we started and you know how is my open source project healthy how's my community healthy and so we pulled a bunch of those people that are asking those questions together and elizabeth and matt and sean were really great in turning up and um, from that, we we kind of proposed those first one or two or three uh, metrics models. Um, but some of the things that um, I learned a lot from that is that, you know, people really wanted to know, uh, you know, to, to connect around asking the right questions, but um, they didn't have time to spin up like the answer part, like the, the you know, or, or like the, the investment in that was really unclear. So, for example, um, you know, responsiveness, like, you know, we, I kind of presented Augur and some other dashboards, but writing like Juniper, it was just too much. So I sort of stepped back for a second um, and um, asked myself, what is the best way to first present the information that we have so that people start to, um, so I created this GitHub repository. This is like, I'm not suggesting any of this be chaos, but just so you know, I took those three, uh, what we called metrics, uh, models and made them into kind of like hierarchies in our GitHub repository. And then when within each one of those, just had have like a flat file right now, which is like questions and methods. And each of these questions are pulled. Well, not some of them are new and will contribute back, but most of these questions are pulled from your existing metrics of the chaos project. Um, and then we're, what we're trying to do, or at least my initial thing was to try and collect the ways that we can answer that, like existing work that was already happening, data that we had, that sort of thing. Um, and, but still like people, it's, it still kind of falls on me to kind of find those types of methods and bring it in. <clears throat> but it was a really good, it's been really, really good for getting people to kind of grok the work, right? Um, really like, you know, here's security, here's a set of best practice questions. <clears throat> some of this came from some of the work that I, I haven't, uh, that was one of the reasons I came today to kind of update myself. But, you know, some of the questions that we were asking, like the open SFS best practices and there's the scorecard. So there's some actionable work here. But even still, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm just recovering from a not COVID cold. So I'm a little bit er hermy. Um, but so it's organized visually was one thing that seemed to be really helpful in conversations um, that there's a list of questions that was tied to the chaos was really important because I can say this is peer reviewed. This is our in, these are our peers in the ecosystem. This is, you know, validated through research and, and um, all these types of things. It's just not me, Emma Irwin, saying these are the, the questions that you should be asking. Um, and then we started talking. So we had the structure, we had some initial kind of conversations and, and in the OSPO, something that we really wanted to be able to do is, is say like, you know, your project, you know, kind of meets the gold standard for what we're looking for. Um, and then we started, so then I started to ask myself, like, what does the gold standard mean? What would that even be? So I pulled together uh, this uh, another working group of folks who are interested and we we set some goals so um, I won't make you read all my issues but basically um, something we're calling foundational where is the thing um, oh, it's down here um, yeah this is like the meta test so this is like the the pilot project that I'm running right now, which is basically, you know, we have a solid set of peer validated questions. This is chaos project, um, but we need to identify a subgroup of these. And this is kind of like more of a cross section between all of those different metrics areas. We want to say like this one from security, this one from um, um, community or contribution. And this one, like, like kind of pluck out some of those. And um, so we, our, key our first key result was like find 
you know, 12, it ended up being 10 metrics that were like, yes, like if we can get people looking at these and, and working to improve these, then we're, we're going to have progress. And also we'll start to create a shared language around like what it means to have, it's not going to be everything. We're not going to claim that it's everything, but it's going to be a really solid start <coughs> and also become something that people can take to their managers. There's a lot of um, challenges around behavioral changes that are like, how do we make it more carrot and less stick? Right. Like if people are able to talk about their success and moving the needle, you know, all that kind of behavioral stuff. Um, and then we want one method for answering each one of these. Originally, this said deployable in under two minutes or something, but we've just removed people deploying by themselves altogether. Because honestly, two minutes is too long. <laughs> um, and then we built this prototype. So um, right now, what this pilot looks like is that we have this first set of foundational metrics and I'll just, we've, we've agreed on these at this point. So security, we're answering, what is our response time for security alerts? I don't think that one is in chaos yet, but we have the depend upon alerts. And whenever I, and I've gone through and interviewed all the, and I can figure out how to contribute these two, um, all of the security folks at interviewed are like, yes, that would be really helpful in, in moving us to more towards a more compliant organization. Um, the open SSF uh, scorecard, which I think was in our initial security metrics model. Mm -hmm. And then this kept coming up. I was interviewing. I didn't even ask uh, security folks this question, mm -hmm. but it just kept coming up. Two reviewers, two reviewers. There should be two reviewers. So I've just added that. And we're also trying to do just as a side note that I won't even get into an inner source and open source version of this. This is just the inner source. Repository compliance, hugely important um, for OSPO. Uh, safety, really just focused on our people being trained, responsiveness, and a couple questions that I also pulled from your metrics. And so those are the, we're going to be starting with these four. And I'll show you the, the draft, that report. And okay. we're organizing them, sorry, organizing them by bronze, silver, and gold, and gold to kind of eventually get to that answer, asking that question about gold level. Sorry, Sean. No, no, no. I, I would just suggest I think what folks are getting at with the two approvers is trying to create some semblance of a software engineering process and making it visible through the Git repository. And I've actually been working with the LF on some software engineering curriculum for embedded systems. Mm -hmm. And the absence of software engineering practice in open source is like a quiet little thing we don't talk about. But if there's folks interested in finding sort of the GitHub corollaries or parallels for things that are a part of a, a rigorous software engineering process, mm -hmm. I'd, I'd be keen to collaborate on that and, and connect them with some of the folks at the LF that are thinking about these things. Yeah. Um, and you I think it's definitely it around it's security. Not, yeah. Specific to security, but yeah. Those, those things too, the security and software engineering practice are tightly coupled. Mm -hmm. Totally. Mm -hmm. Can you yeah. scroll down? Keep going. Yeah. So the, so then so then silver and you know we're trying to go from most critical to like not least critical, but then documentation usage discovery. And gold is really also those harder things. So, yeah. um, but we do have a survey that .NET has used before, and you know the idea was that we'd be able to deploy it on multiple organizations, um, and that might be more of a self serve. So Dan Mosley, who you've met. He was like, I'd love to be able to deploy this survey on like, you know, I did it on 38 repositories, but it, you know, it was manual and I want to be able to just come to a dashboard and, uh, you know, select which repositories I want and run it. So that's why it's at the gold level, because it would be highly valuable, but we need engineering time and, and right now, like, uh, and leadership, burnout and funding. I think I just cut funding off, though, the other day because.